What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to build a simple automated Excel bot in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to automate Excel processes in Python today, and we're going to build an actual automated bot, which is different than just using Python to work with Excel files. I have made a video on this already on my channel as well. Uh, today, we're not going to just parse Excel files, create Excel files and work with them in Python. We're going to actually control the actual Excel application. So we're going to use something called COM, which is a mechanism in Windows that provides us with the interface that is language independent and we can use to target the Excel functionality. And we're going to automate, we're going to control the actual Excel application using Python to do whatever we want to do, which is different than just using Python as uh, an Excel file parsing machine or manipulation machine, we're going to actually control the Microsoft Excel software in today's video. And for this on Windows, we don't even need to have any external libraries, this works out of the box, we can just use the core Python modules, we can start by saying import OS and import win 32 uh, com, which is the module that we need to use here dot client, and we're going to give this an alias of win 32. This is what we're going to use. Um, and we can start with a very simple thing, we can just target the Excel application, create a simple worksheet, and then just save it without any content without any action. And for that, what we do is we say Excel equals win 32 dot dispatch. And here we pass a string Excel dot application, this targets the Excel application. And then we can also set a parameter called visible to actually see what we're doing. So you can automate the Excel processes without seeing the results and without seeing the progress. But if you want to see the application, what it's actually doing, you want to say Excel dot visible with a capital V equals true. And once you have that, you can say workbook is equal to Excel workbooks dot add with a capital A. And here we then just say workbook dot uh, safe as as you can see, all these methods, all these functions start with capital letters, which is not typical in Python, but this is the com interface. So those are the methods here. Um, and we now save this just as a file. Now, one thing that you need to keep in mind here is that if you just provide something like my file.xlsx, this will not be saved uh, in your current Python directory. Now here I have one from the test run that I did before. Uh, but it's not going to be saved here in the directory that you're working in, it's going to be saved in the directory that Excel is working in. So if you just do this, it is usually going to save the file in the documents folder of your user. If you want to store this in your Python directory, if you want to save it into your Python directory, you need to say os.path.join. And then you're going to pass this here as the second parameter. And before that, you say os.get current working directory. So get CWD. <clears throat> and this essentially now takes the directory that you're currently in with the Python script and then appends to it the file name and then you save it there. So in this case, in the current directory that we're working in right now. So if I run this now, you can see that Excel opens up down here. Now, actually, I had it open already. So let me just restart this. Let me delete this. Now, if I run this, you can see Excel opens up down below. We have this file, nothing changed yet, but we can see my file.xlsx is saved. So the actual application was run. Uh, and we we open it up, we save the file, and that's it. Now we can do basically everything that we can do with the Axel software by using that interface. So we can use the functionality of the Axel software. I'm not going to cover every single bit of functionality that we have here, I'm going to cover quite a bit here. But still, if you want to have a functionality that I didn't cover, you can look up the com documentation of the Excel application. And then you can see that basically, you can control the whole software using Python and using these com interfaces. And what we can do now, for example, is we can say sheet one is going to be the sheet, the first sheet that we have down here. So if we open up the file, you can see we have sheet one down here. So we can say that we want to get that sheet by saying workbook dot worksheets. And then we want to have sheet one, and then we can change the name of the sheet. For example, we can say sheet one dot name is equal to um, to do list. Let's let's make it to do list in this video. And then we can also format a little bit, we can say, for example, give me the columns, uh, how many columns are we going to use, let's say we're going to use four columns. And uh, I want to have a certain width of those columns. So I want to say the column width of those columns has to be at least 
uh, or has to be exactly 30. And then I have more space for text. So what I can do here is I can say sheet one range, and I can say a to D, which are columns A, B, C, D. And I can say dot column width is going to be equal to 30. And if I now run this, in this case, you will see first of all, it says we have this file already. If I allow it to replace the file, everything will work as expected. If I say no, let me show you, this is going to give me an exception. So if I say no, uh, I'm not able to do the save as operation, which basically terminates my script. If I run this again, now let me just close these windows here. Let me just close them. And if I run this again here, and I say this time, yes, you are allowed to replace it, then everything works as expected. You can see this is now now called to do list. And we have the column width of 30 here for those four columns. Now the problem is, of course, I didn't save afterwards. So if I now just say don't save, and I open up the file, the changes are not in the file. So it still has the name sheet one because we didn't save uh, the progress, we didn't do this one again. Uh, but yeah, this is some basic formatting. Let's just change the value, uh, the values of the individual cells. Now this is quite easy. Basically, we just get the cells of the sheet by saying cells is equal to sheet one dot cells with a capital C. And then we can use that uh, in uh, we can use that like an array, but not exactly because we're not using square brackets, we're using uh, we're calling the cells actually. So we're, we're actually saying cells. And then we're calling cells with these parentheses. And then we specify one a for example. And we say that the value of this cell is going to be equal to the task. So the to do task. And then I can do the same thing here for a b c d. I can say b not b sorry, b c and d. And then I can say here, okay, this is not the task, this is the description. And then I have uh, this is the, we can say this is done, this is the status of, of the task. And then we say time needed, either expected or in the past how long it took. And what we can also do is we can format these cells, we can say cells a one a and then dot font dot bold is going to be equal to true. And this basically makes uh, the content of the cell bold, and we can change this here to B to C and to D. And then basically, we get the result. Um, there you go. So let's also go ahead and add some values, let's say here cells, and of course, this can be automated with a loop if we have lists of values and all that, but we're going to do it now manually quite simply here. Uh, dot value will be something like dinner. And then we're going to copy this here to B, C, D. So dinner, cook dinner is the description. Then we have done no. And we have um, the time needed, I don't know, 40 minutes or something like that. Or let's, let's just go with 40. And let's maybe keep this empty here. Uh, and only add an x if we have it done already. Now we can copy this, we can paste it down here, and we can change this two to a three. And then we can change the tasks here, clean room, clean your room, or in this case, my room, since this is a to do list. Let's say this is done already, it took 20 minutes or something because it was already quite clean. And let's maybe add two more of those. Um, which we're going to have four. And then actually, let's just keep it at four. So actually three. Let's say this is now work out, go to the gym. This is not done. And this will take I don't know, 120 minutes because yeah, why not? Now, let's just go ahead and see what this produces in the Excel program, we can open this up, we can say yes, I want to replace it. And then you can see it fills up the actual content right before our eyes, we can see we have the task, the description, the, uh, the done status, the time needed, and we have the values in here, you can see we have the bold font. So this actually worked and it was controlled by Python, especially because the file already existed. You can see, since we have the, the possibility to pause here and, and nothing has yet happened. If I click on yes, you can see how it does everything uh, on the fly here. Now, let's say we want to have the sum of the time needed down here as a formula. This is quite simple. This is the cell 5d or d5. So what we have to do is we have to just say cells 5d dot value is equal to and then sum actually equals sum 
uh, the simple Excel formula. Essentially, this was um, D2 up until D4. And if I run this now, this gives me the sum down here 180, you can see the formula is in here. So this is the most basic stuff, right? This is nothing too complicated. Um, and there are a bunch of different things that you can do like that you can use um, fancy functions, you can use formatting of all sorts. One thing that I want to show you in this video in particular, because this is a little bit uh, different is adding charts. So actually taking the data that we have here, and turning it into uh, into actual graphs. This is something quite interesting. I think for most of the stuff, you can just look up the documentation. Uh, and I don't need to show every single feature of the API of the interface here. But the charts are a little bit special. So I want to show them here. Uh, we're going to just create a simple chart, I'm going to call it ch. And I'm going to say sheet one dot shapes dot at chart dot select. So this is the chart. And now what we can do so basically select means we're creating the chart and we're selecting it because in the next step, we're going to talk about the active chart and the active chart is the one we select. So this is why we use the select function. And here we say now Excel dot active chart dot set source data. So in Excel, let me show you manually how this is done. Now we don't have values here. But let's say we have two, three, four, five, I take these values here, I go to uh, where was it was it insert, there you go, I pick a chart type like this one here. And this already has this as the source, right. So I can, um, I'm not very good at Excel, to be honest, but I think I can change select the data here. And here I specify what data is the chart representing, right. And we do the same thing now in Python, by saying the source data that we want to plot is exactly the data that we have in here d2 up until d4, just the time it takes for it doesn't really make a lot of sense to plot it in this case, but we're just going to do it here for the sake of uh, the demonstration. So the source is going to be sheet one dot range. And the range is as I said, d2 up until d4. And the important thing is here now, if we just do it like that, let me just let, let me just finish uh, the thing. Um, or actually, let's do it right now. The problem is that you have two types of plotting. Um, plotting the graph, you can do it column wise or row wise. Um, and essentially, if you don't specify plot by equals two, if you just leave it at the default value, you're not going to get what you expect you would get. So you don't get what you get automatically. If I select d2 to d4 in Excel, and I create a new graph, it's going to actually do what we do here in Python, if I say plot by equals two, the default is, I think one, um, and it doesn't do what we want to do. So this is just a different way of interpreting the data. And you need to pass it here in order to get the plot that we desire. Maybe I can show you that in a second here, if we don't do it, uh, what it's going to look like. But before that, let me show you here that we can use different charts, obviously, because up until now, we have not specified what kind of chart we want to do. Do we want to have a pie chart? Do we want to have a, a simple a line chart, whatever. And essentially, what you want to do here is you want to go to the documentation to the Excel chart type, I can link, uh, I can I can put the link in the description down below. And what you do is you say chart type equals, and then you specify the number and I have the link here, actually, so maybe I can open this up in the browser. Let me see if I can do that. There you go, opens it up on my second screen. So here we have the XL chart type enumeration from Excel. And if I scroll here, you can see this in the middle is the value, this is the name and this is the description. And right now what we're going to plot is uh, 64 or 63. Yeah, stacked line is what we're going to plot here. Um, so this is the chart type that we choose, we can just say 63. And this is going to be a stacked line chart. This is what we want to plot in this case. So what I do then is I'm going to say here's save s so that we have the actual result. Again, OS path join uh, OS get current work current working directory and then my file dot xlsx. And then I can run this here. And say yes, and say yes, again. And in this case, you can see we have the line chart. So this is the stack line chart, which is based on these three values. So you can see that those are the values that the chart is using. Um, let me show you what happens if we don't specify plot by equals two, because this is actually something that you don't want to happen. Because what this is going to do is, uh, as far as I remember, this is going to to interpret the individual numbers as um, individual series. So we have one series, another series and another ser uh, series, and they don't have anything to plot, right. So 
you want to swap the way it is interpreted by saying plot by equals two. Plot by equals two. And I think that I actually have a link to the documentation for this one as well. You can see here, uh, plot by one is data series in a column and plot by two is data series in a row. And this is the one that we're choosing here in this case. So this is the documentation. Again, if I forget to put it in the description down below, first of all, let me know in the comments so that I remember. And maybe I'm going to put it afterwards into the comments uh, into the into the description. Otherwise, if for some reason, I'm not reliable, and you don't find the link in the description, you can just go to learn Microsoft, learn.microsoft.com slash whatever language slash office VWA, Visual Basic, API, Excel, and then whatever. Or you can just Google COM API Excel. So this is the full documentation, essentially. Now, what we can also do here, let's go back to this um, chart type here, I want to show you also the pie chart. And as far as I have it here in my code, this is the number five. So XL pi is the number five. So we can just go ahead here and say, okay, this is a pie chart. Um, and the rest actually stays the same. So this should already be enough here. Um, replace, replace. And this makes a little bit more sense in this case, because the time needed is something that you probably want to plot in a pie chart, because what, how do you interpret the lines it doesn't really make a lot of sense, because it's not a time series. Uh, but here you can see which task takes how much time and you can of course, customize it with a legend and all that. But essentially, this is how you build a simple Excel bot in Python, you just take the API, you take the functionality that you want to automate. Um, some functionality is quite simple, like filling up cells with formulas. Um, this one is a little bit different, you have to uh, set the source data in the right way, you have to choose a chart type. But everything is well documented, uh, documented in the API documentation. And I think this is a little bit, it, at least if you're on Windows, I prefer this way of automating Excel than just working with Excel files in Python, because you're using uh, using the actual Excel API, which is, I think, more convenient. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.